Hi everybody, this is another GCSE video PE lesson with me, Mr. Mason. This one being on the structure and functions of the cardiorespiratory system. Please feel free to subscribe so you're up to date with the online videos and also leave a comment uh, with any questions or any topics that you want covering. Okay, so quick recap task, five questions there from previous topics. Have a go at them. Pause the video and then we'll go through the answers on the next slide. So let's go through the answers. Question one, three muscle types. You've got cardiac, which is the heart, involuntary examples found in the digestive system and also in the vessels or in the walls of the blood vessels and voluntary muscle, which relates to the 12 major muscles in the body, the ones that we can consciously control, such as the biceps, triceps, quadriceps, hamstrings, etc. Question two, identify the three muscle fiber types. You've got slow twitch type one, fast twitch type 2A and type 2X. And obviously you need to know the characteristics of those as well. Question three, um, characteristics of slow twitch muscle fibers. They are small in size and therefore can only produce low force. They have high numbers of mitochondria, which um, is used for the energy and high numbers of myoglobin. Uh, we've related to this in previous lessons as the bouncers as they're the ones that allow the oxygen into the muscle and also they have high fatigue resistance so therefore used by long distance runners um, to help them obviously maximize their performance the four different types of joints you've got pivot which is found in the neck hinge which is found in the elbow and knee and also the ankle now remember this is for the edXL spec so that might differ when referring to the ankle joint. The condyloid joint is found in the wrist and the ball and socket is found in the shoulder and hip. Uh, the function of the quadriceps are to extend the lower leg at the knee joint. Now onto the cardiovascular system. Now when we talk about the cardiovascular system, we are talking about three main components. And these components are the heart, which is known as the cardiac, the blood vessels, and also the blood. Those three components help us talk about the functions of the cardiovascular system. Now, when we talk about the functions, the first bit that we need to know is the AO1. Now, hopefully we'll have heard of AO1, AO2, AO3. AO1 is the knowledge, AO2 is the application. So for this case, the AO1, for the first function of the cardiovascular system, is to transport substances around the body, okay? And that relates to the component of the heart. As we know, the heart is a muscle. It pumps blood substances such as oxygen, glucose, and carbon dioxide. So when we exercise, if we look at the application, we have an increase in demand of oxygen in the working muscles. And therefore, that's why we experience an increase in heart rate to help transport oxygen and also glucose to the working muscles. Glucose, as we know, is used for energy. We also need to get rid of waste products such as carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of aerobic respiration. And we need to also get rid of that out of the working muscles and we breathe that out through our respiratory system. Now the next function is to do with the blood vessels and that is to control body temperature. Now this is done through the key terms, which is vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Now as our body gets hot, our, our blood vessels vasodilate. This is our blood vessel as we look through it, and the centre of the blood vessel is known as a lumen. When our blood vessels vasodilate, the size of the lumen increases, and that helps to increase blood flow to the surface of our skin to help us cool down. When we get too cold, our blood vessels vasoconstrict and the size of the lumen is reduced and that helps to restrict blood flow or reduce blood flow to that area. And the final function is to do with the blood. Now within the blood, we have components such as platelets, red blood cells, white blood cells and also plasma. Now it's important that we know what platelets do. Platelets help to clot blood. So when performing, if you cut yourself, if a boxer gets punched in the nose and the nose starts bleeding, the platelets will help clot the blood, 
which will help stop the blood coming out the nose and allow the boxer to continue to fight. White blood cells will help us fight infections and we should know what red blood cells do which help carry oxygen to the working muscles. So quick recap question, what type of muscle is the heart? And hopefully you said cardiac muscle. Start to have a little think about why on the diagram here, one side of the heart is blue and one side of the heart is red. And we'll come on to that shortly. So now we're on to the structure of the heart. Now we need to know these components because you may get asked a question in the exam about identifying the top top right chamber of the heart. Now the top two chambers, as you can see, are the right and left atrium. Now how we see it, the right hand side is obviously on the left and the left is on the right. It's just how we see the heart when we refer to it in the diagram, it is from within. The bottom two chambers are the ventricles, the right and left. Now the four main blood vessels in the heart are the vena cava, the pulmonary artery, the aorta and the pulmonary vein. Now we should hopefully know the characteristics of veins and arteries. Veins bring blood back to the heart, arteries take blood away from the heart. Other important structures of the cardiovascular system, we have the septum, which is the wall in the middle of the heart, which separates oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. We have the tricuspid valve, which separates the right atrium and the right ventricle. And the bicuspid valve, which separates the, the left atrium and left ventricle. And we have the semilunar valves, where the ventricles contract, forcing blood away from the heart. So now we know about the structure of the heart, we need to know the pathway of the circulatory system. So I've got my red blood cell here, as you can see. Now, when the blood returns to the body, it returns by the vessel, the vena cava. The inferior vena cava is blood coming from the lower body. The superior vena cava is blood returning to the heart from the upper body. Now, blood enters into the right atrium. Now, the reason why the right hand side is blue as the blood is currently deoxygenated as it's coming from the body. The right atrium contracts, forcing blood through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Now, how I try and get you to remember which valve it is, the tri, the RI, helps you to remember that it's always on the right hand side. Now, the purpose of the tricuspid valve is to prevent the backflow back into the right atrium. The right ventricle contracts, forcing blood into the pulmonary artery, which then goes to the lungs. At the lungs, the blood becomes oxygenated through the process of gaseous exchange and then returns back to the heart via the pulmonary vein. Hence why it's now red color on the left hand side. So it goes into the left atrium. The left atrium contracts, sending blood through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. Now the bicuspid valve again prevents backflow of blood back into the left atrium. The left ventricle contracts, sending blood into the aorta and then to the working muscles. Now, a few characteristics of the heart. As you can see here, the left hand side, the ventricular wall is slightly thicker than the right hand side. And this is because the left hand side has to contract with more force as it is sending the blood to the working body. Task for you now is to go back to the blank diagram of the heart and see if you can identify all four chambers, all the vessels and also the valves. And then as a little extension task, see if you can bullet point the journey of the blood from entering the heart as deoxygenated blood and all the way through to leaving the heart as oxygenated blood. If you're struggling, just rewind the video and have a look at the pathway of the red blood cell. Good luck. And to finish, five questions, pause the video, have a go at answering them, and then we'll go through them shortly. 
So let's go through the answers. Question one, identify the four chambers of the heart. You've got the right atrium and the left atrium, which are the upper chambers of the heart, and the right and left ventricle. Question two, what valve prevents backflow into, into the right atrium? Hopefully, we should have remembered the right, the RI, which will help us identify that it is the tricuspid valve. Question three, what blood vessel takes oxygenated blood from the left ventricle? Remember, the left ventricle is a, has a larger or a thicker muscular wall, and this is because it's pumping blood to the rest of the body, and that main vessel is the aorta. What valve prevents backflow in the left atrium? That is, of course, the bicuspid valve. And which blood vessel brings deoxygenated blood back to the heart? It's coming back to the heart, so therefore it must be a vein. And it is the vena cava.